Good morning, Pinewood. I am Kylie Perkins. I help out with the lyrics and the lights here during the mornings. I'm usually in the back, so that's where I'll be most of the time. And during the weekdays, I am a barista at Coastal Coffee Roasters, and that's super fun. If you need some good coffee, I can help you out with that. During my free time, some of the favorite things I enjoy doing are taking long walks um, in the woods or on the beach, going on horseback rides, playing with my two dogs. They're awesome. And James asked me to share a little bit about the goodness of God and how, what that means to me. So right away, it reminded me of when I get stressed and overwhelmed and I need to just get out and clear my head. And as I go on my walks, I notice the little things like the little purple flowers or yellow flowers that the Lord will just put along the path as I walk or a little red mushroom that just looks so cool. It's just awesome to see that. It brings me to Matthew 6 where it says do not worry about really just life and he says how he takes care of the birds and the flowers and how they grow and he provides for them. Why wouldn't he provide for me? God does that. He cares about his animals and he cares about me much, much more than them. So I don't have to worry and I don't have to stress about anything. And it's just the little reminders like that that just keep me remembering that God has me and that I don't have to figure anything out by myself because he already did. Hi, I'm Meredith Provost. I've been a member of Somerville Baptist Church for many years. I currently serve on the worship team. So each Mother's Day, I reflect on my thoughts and desires of being a mother. For a very long time, I was pretty career driven and didn't think that motherhood was even for me. I didn't think it was something that I wanted. Uh, then my siblings started to have children and they're amazing. And I thought, hmm, I think I could have one of these. So as a single female in my late thirties, I'm in a really interesting season of life right now. I'm faced with the facts of biology and aging and outside influences say things like, you're not getting any younger, make sure you're prepared, no regrets. And it has affected me. But in my daily walk with Jesus, I know and I'm reminded that he's got this. He has me. And I love to look back on my life and see God's goodness at each moment. Just like the lyrics in the song, all my life you have been faithful and your goodness is running after me. And I know it will be the same for this season of life that I'm in now. And one of my favorite verses comes from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning, I'm Pam Wilson. I am a member of Somerville Baptist Church for the past two and a half years with my husband, Joe, who works in the youth department. I'm currently serving at the Pinewood campus in guest services uh, since last September when the church was launched. I want to share some thoughts with you today about the goodness of God in my life. Of course, it would take a very long time to share everything that's happened and God's goodness in my life over these past several years. I think about the song, The Goodness of God, when I think about His goodness. It has a song that's meant so much to so many recently. And the song talks about, um, from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God, and that's basically how I feel about God's goodness. I've seen His goodness in the real happy times of my life, the birth of my children, when they were baptized, when my grandchildren were born. I've seen His goodness in very sad times, um, especially nine years ago when my first husband, Nathan, was um, taken home to be with the Lord unexpectedly. I was not ready to walk that journey by myself, but God had other plans 
So at that time, I had to draw on some inner strength that I didn't even know that I had. My journey had been prepared years ago. I didn't just start my, start my walk with the Lord the day that Nathan died. I had been preparing for that moment through the years, developing that faith and trust in God as I studied my scripture. I saw his goodness day to day. When that moment came and I had to call on that strength and peace and courage to get through those days and months that I was facing as a single person again, I realized that I needed to turn to scripture. I sought out the book of John. I prayed through the book of John. I also read some books from some um, other folks that had suffered loss in their life. Uh, C.S. Lewis was one of my favorites. He had a quote that came to mean so much to me, and I want to share that with you uh, today. It says, affliction is often that thing that prepares an ordinary person for some sort of extraordinary destiny. And I started praying that the Lord would show me that new destiny in my life. And he really did in a phenomenal way. I was able to participate and facilitate a grief share group as I began to come out of that grief fog and see that God could use me again. And of recent, um, many of you know that Joe and I have only been married about two and a half years. So three years ago, the Lord sent Joe into my life and we had both lost our spouses. But in this season of my life, I see how God has navigated me through my walk to bring me to this point. I see his goodness has sustained me through all of those days and has brought me to this new destiny that I have found at Somerville Baptist with Joe and now at Pinewood. My name is Rhonda Littleton and I have really, it really, I believe that it is the undeserved privilege of serving as children's minister at Somerville Baptist. I just want to say happy Mother's Day, right? And, and what I want to say too is that um, on Mother's Day, um, if you're not a mom, a biological mom or adopted mom, it, people don't know what to say to you and so that just don't be weird don't be weird on Mother's Day and so you know when you say weird things or you're weird um, to us who um, all of us beautiful women who don't have kids biologically or by adoption we smile and we understand that you don't know what to say but really on the inside we just really want to throat punch you but we, we smile we smile. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. I would never do that. I would never throat punch you. I would never do that. So just for the record. So what I do want to say though, um, is that whether you have uh, biological children or not, or whether you've adopted or not, or whether you um, have an aunt or whatever, if you're not an aunt, if you just, if you can still influence uh, boys and girls, right? You can still pour into them. You can still be that one positive adult. We all need that. Kids need that. Kids need lots and lots of adults in their life pouring into them and uh, encouraging them and speaking God's blessings over them, his affirmation over them from God's word. Uh, kids need that. And so their parents, parents, <laughs> parents need help. They need help and uh, you coming along beside them and being that one caring adult in their life. And so you know what I love? I love that I get to be that one caring adult for the last 32 years. Boys and girls all across the state, um, I've had the opportunity to pour into them. And the best part is I can love on your kids. I can give them uh, lots of uh, cookies and sugar and ice cream and then I send them home and I go home by myself. It's great. Um, hi, I'm Sandy Carr and um, I've been a member of this church for many years but I, um, I am a mom of four beautiful daughters and I have four wonderful son-in-laws and I have 14 grandchildren. And um, I guess my season of where I am right now is extremely busy. Um, you think that it's going to slow down a little bit, but when you're 
chasing and trying to get to everything with all these kids, it, it gets relatively busy. So I was thinking as James was asking about this, um, I think that what I would want to say to my younger self and to the young moms out there is to not get caught up in the um, world of comparison and comparing where you are, where your children are, and um, thinking that you're not enough. You are enough and um, you're doing a great job. Good morning, I'm Tracy Lawson and I live and work here in the upstate of South Carolina. Um, I teach English at Wren High School and um, I'm married to Marion Lawson and I'm the mom of three adult children, James and Emily and Sam and mother-in-law to Tara and Chandler and um, grandma or Gracie as they call me to Noah and Judah and um, Lawson. And those are some of the joys of my adult life. I was thinking about Mother's Day and the women in my life that I'm thankful for and grateful for. I think three important women that helped me learn to be a mother and learn to um, what it looked like to, to live a life pleasing to God were women that I, that I watched every day as a child. My mother always took me to church, I mean, along with my father, but she taught Sunday school and taught me in Bible school. My grandmother worked in textiles, but on Sunday I was always at church with her. She was the church librarian and I would help her in the library of the little church we went to in Candler, North Carolina, the mountains. And then my aunt Margaret was the choir director. And so I saw women, um, she was also the cafeteria manager at Pisgah Elementary School. So I um, had women in my life who worked and at, for Jesus and served the Lord and um, did it as part of, of every day of their lives. And I was also thinking about some things that I've learned as a mom. And I think that as a mom of 30 years, I've learned over time to, to trust God with my children. Um, sometimes we as parents or I can come up with mama-sized dreams and goals for my children, but that's not what's important. I need to love them and support them because um, God has God-sized plans and goals. And I've, I've seen that happen in my children's lives. God has dreams and ideas and plans for our children that we can't even imagine. And so we just want to love and pray and support and not get in the way of what God wants to do in our children's lives. I've also learned an important lesson over the years. And um, I heard a preachers say this, that often in our life when we're experiencing joys or difficulties or whatever the circumstances are, things are, life's confusing, we don't know what to do, we're facing physical um, issues, health issues, frustrations, and we just, we need to make a decision and don't know what to do, that one of the things that we can do is just to pause. We're able to um, regain perspective. We, we look to Jesus and in looking to Him, it sorts the priorities and changes our perspective. Sometimes the situation doesn't change, but our perspective does. And I found that to be very good, valuable advice to use through the years. I just want to share Psalm 3, 3 with you. I heard this in a song last night. I picked up a devotion this morning and the scripture was repeated. So the last couple of days, it's been meaningful to me. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I'm thankful every day that God is our protector, our children's protector. He surrounds us. He, um, everything that happens to us is filtered through Him. And no matter what we're going through, no matter what our children are going through, God loves us, protects us, and goes through that with us. And we can give Him glory for that.